New PBs, new race records, new world records. We are officially in the era of the Super Shoe. Since the 2017 release of the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Elite with its new midsole foam and its carbon fiber plate, there's been an arms race of sorts in the major running brands to try and build the world's fastest shoe. But are they? How much faster are they? And are they faster at all? Well, we at GTN decided to do some science to try and find out. So, Sam and I did a cheap shoe versus super shoe video at the end of last year. And in all honesty, the conclusion and results weren't all that surprising. The super shoe was faster. And admittedly, the testing that we did wasn't all that scientific. We did a flat out 400 meter and 2K effort. And also the cheap shoe that we used, the Solomenzi from Amazon was very cheap around 15 to 20 quid off Amazon. So I promised at the end of the video that we'd be coming back, we'd be exploring this further and being a little bit more scientific with it. So here we are at the University of Bath, the kind of place that you come to if you want to do things properly. And also because James and I aren't practicing scientists, although one of us does have a sports science degree, we've brought in the help of sports physiologist, Jonathan Robinson. So what we're going to do today here at the lab is some exercise physiology tests. Basically, we're going to get on a treadmill and run pretty fast in the shoes while we measure our oxygen consumption, which will give us a pretty accurate measure of how efficient we are in each pair of shoes. We'll do this at uh, pretty fast speeds, maybe not quite marathon world record pace, but 3.30 per K, because that's really what the shoes were designed for. And then we'll also do it at more mere mortal speeds, uh, so that we can see whether these shoes are just as efficient for than normal mere mortal who's, uh, who's running normal paces. Yeah, now to give this some context, since the release of the Nike Vaporfly, the top 50 marathon male times have improved by 2% on average. So clearly, these shoes are faster. But how much faster, and perhaps more importantly, are they only faster for the types of runners that are running near to three minute per K, or are they faster for you guys out there too? Okay, so we're here in the lab. We've got a few different pairs of shoes to compare against. We've got the good old cheap Solomenzies. No. No, we're not gonna use them this time? I think we can, yeah, get rid of those. Okay, no, they're gone. Those. All right, going for something a little bit more realistic. Yeah. The Nike Revolution 6, they're 45 pounds, weigh 283 grams. And then next in the run is the On Cloudflow Running, which are 130 pounds and weigh 235 grams. And then, top of the range, we have the carbon plated Cloud Boom Echo from On, and they are 195 pounds and they weigh 220 grams. So, we're going to test all three of these. We're going to run a six minute interval in each one. We're going to measure our running economy. Uh, and then we're going to run at 3.30, okay, did we say? Yeah, that's 17 kilometers an hour. As well, we will be popping these nerve run insoles in to track our gait, our power, basically collecting as much data as we possibly can and improving on last test. Exactly, GTN does science. How's that pace feeling, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Do you wish you had carbon shoes on right now?
All right, Mark. Take two, cloud flow running. See how much more efficient these ones are. Okay, so cheaper shoes have come off. I've just done my run with the kind of mid-range shoe and um, James is doing the same now with the on-cloud flows. So what we're doing is measuring Mark's oxygen consumption while he's running. And obviously with each pair of shoes, we're running at exactly the same speed on the treadmill. So if he's using more oxygen for each pair of shoes or less, we know that those, that pair of shoes is more efficient or less efficient. So we would hope that his carbon shoes would be more efficient. And uh, that's what we're gonna find out. Time for the carbon shoe run, Mark. Thumbs up. So, finish your third test, this time the carbon shoes. Those feel better? Um, I don't know what the numbers say, but... No, we'll crunch I, those in a minute. I genuinely actually didn't find myself looking at the time at all. So much so, Jonathan had to actually tell me to stop, whereas before I knew I had to stop. <laughs> <with two laughs> You're like, I can't wait for this to be yeah, over. Yeah, I, I just didn't really keep track of the time, so... And that might be significant in yeah. itself. Well, I've got to do my turn in the carbon shoes, and then we'll do some number crunching. Okay, so Mark and I have both done three tests uh, with each of the shoes at 17 kilometers an hour or three and a half minutes a K. And we've got some data which we're gonna crunch in a minute. So if you're wondering what Mark's doing now, well, we often get a lot of criticism that uh, we do all these tests at uh, speeds that mere mortals can't run at. So uh, now Mark's doing the same tests. So he's doing five minutes in each pair of shoes, starting with the baseline ones right now, uh, at 11 kilometers an hour or five and a half minutes a K roughly. Uh, so we're gonna see whether the, the shoes have a similar or the same or no effect whatsoever when you're running at uh, more normal running speeds. Mark, penultimate test in the on uh, cloud flow running. The mid range shoe. We're at uh, five and a half minutes, okay? We'll see how efficient these ones are. How are we feeling? Final test of the day. Mark is running light aerobic pace, 5.30 for him, in the carbon on Cloud Boom Echo. How are you feeling, Mark? You gonna make it? Well, 
that's all the testing done. Now it's time uh, to crunch some numbers and say thank you to Jonathan at the University of Bath uh, Physio and Sports Science Lab for uh, putting us up today and uh, putting Mark through his paces and me testing us, making us hurt a little bit. We'll be back sometime for a full on test uh, to see how far Mark can go, but not today. Today we've got some numbers to crunch on these shoes and let you know uh, which ones were most efficient. Well, James, big day of running there. Yeah, a lot of efforts on the treadmill for each of us. Yeah, now, obviously, we have been testing our VO2 on the treadmill in the lab. Ordinarily, we're striving for a high VO2, but interestingly here, lower is better. Yeah, obviously, we're running at the same speed in each pair of shoes, so the less oxygen you're using, the more efficient the shoe, essentially. And that VO2 number is converted into a running economy number, which is measured in milliliters per kg per kilometer. So our clever scientist friend has converted it for us. So for me, in the Nike Revolution 6, the entry-level shoe, I had a running economy of 216.7. In the uh, Nike, uh, in the on Cloud Flow, I had a running economy of 216.0 and then in the on cloud boom echo the carbon shoe i had a running economy of 212.1 so significantly lower with the uh, carbon shoe yeah and i report pretty similar things so on with on the cheap shoe i had 218.8 interestingly exactly the same for the on cloud flow and then a little bit lower for the on cloud boom echo 217. Yeah, interesting that uh, he had the same for the mm. cheap shoe and the cloud flow. The reason for that is possibly the way the shoes are built. Uh, the on cloud cloud flow is a softer shoe, which is more forgiving. The uh, Revolution 6 is a much firmer shoe. So maybe it depends on how you run and what you're looking for in a shoe. And also possibly the longer you go, we only did six minutes efforts. The longer you go, you might need that more forgiving softer shoe so yeah really depends uh, but he had the exact same numbers interestingly all his economy numbers are significantly worse than mine yeah, i knew you'd say that i'm happy to accept you are a better runner than me james uh, we also obviously use the nerve run tracker to measure our power gait etc i'm going to be honest there's not much that we can pull apart here that's conclusive because it's pretty identical in terms of the power because we've been running at the same speed. Um, gate was interesting, but that's probably something we should put apart in another video. And I don't think it's really caused by the shoes. Mostly myself. Yeah, Mark's uh, one foot goes all over the place, which might account for his different running economy. I did find it interesting though, with the carbon shoes, we both saw a slight change. You went more onto your forefoot, whereas I went more onto my rear, possibly because there's more cushioning there and I just quite like that ride through. Yeah. And then, of course, Mark also ran at the slowest speed of 11 kilometers an hour. So we've proved that at the faster speeds, the carbon shoes are definitely more economical. But at the slowest speed, what did we find? Well, actually, yeah, it, it works as well. So I had economy of 218.7 for the cheap shoe, 216.5 for the on cloud flow, and then 216 for the carbon shoe, the on cloud boom echo. So at all speeds, the carbon shoes are still more efficient. Well, I think from now on, every time I buy a pair of shoes, I might have to go into the lab and get them tested. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really opened my eyes to it as well. We had a great time and finding out which shoes work for us and don't work for us. And I know it sounds like a really elitist thing, but this thing, th this is so accessible now, going into labs. Uh, the likes of Jonathan, people around the world are offering this for you, not just VO2 testing, but you know, trying out shoes if you can. I mean, we could sit here and pull this apart for hours, but we should probably stop. So hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up and get involved in the comments section down below. Um, let us know what you'd like to see us testing and doing next.